Okay, okay. We're just about ready to get started. A couple housekeeping items before we do get started. Um, Frank, since you've done this so many times with the GoToWebinar, can you explain how you would like? We're going to put everyone who is attending um, on mute so that we don't have any background noise. And we would ask, there is a, a chat box on the screen. If you have a question, uh, feel free to type it in anytime during the presentation. We'll try to stop at a couple points and address uh, questions that have come in. Uh, if there are questions that may require some offline conversation, uh, we may tell you, hey, we see it, and we'll talk to you later. Um, so please be patient with us. We'll try to get to everyone's questions, though, uh, during the session if we can. One other, one other uh, note is this uh, webinar is being recorded. It will be available uh, later this afternoon or tomorrow on the Fillmore Group's blog. Uh, if for whatever reason you don't want to participate in a recorded webinar, drop now. <laughs> see ya. All right, so go ahead and let's get started. Okay, so we're going to take you through a very fast information-filled session. And if you're at your desk and you have your lunch out, um, you can hit the net next one and the next one and the next one. So these are some lunch choices. Uh, the first two on the left obviously are very healthy, and the one on the right is the one that I had so that I can make sure we get through this in 45 minutes. So I will be speaking pretty quickly. We have a lot of information to cover. Um, we will, as Frank said, we're going to have a copy of the presentation on our blog at the end of the session. You can download it and share it with your colleagues, um, and we encourage you to do so. The agenda, what we're going to cover today. Um, I don't want you to be bored, and I want you to remember some of the key points. So I'm going to be using some baseball analogies since Major League Baseball started this week, and also some fruit examples because we all know that's how we do comparisons. And we have a few polls in the session as well. So next slide. The three takeaways. Um, these, we have been doing Oracle to DB2 migration webinars for probably the past six years, maybe seven years. Um, the takeaways never change. Um, we want anyone who is here to understand what the critical factors are. There are some customers who simply don't qualify to do a good migration. They're really difficult migrations. Um, we want you to understand what the savings are because that's probably why you're here. But we also want you to understand how you assess the migration effort and what is involved, because it tends to be the showstopper when you're getting rolling. Next slide. Oh, also, throughout the, um, throughout the presentation, we have some homework assignments. And the reason we have these is that we're trying to help uh, customers that are on this webinar understand and do some self-qualification, uh, some things that you can do internally to assess how ready you are to, to really seriously consider DB2. So would you like to do your introduction? Sure. Um, for those of you who don't know, I saw some familiar names in the uh, list of registrants, so uh, welcome back. Um, the Fillmore Group is a 30-year IBM business partner founded in 1987, uh, headquartered in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, we focus on IBM analytics software uh, across all platforms, uh, including uh, Linux, Unix, Windows, and System Z. Uh, we provide data management, technical consulting, and staff augmentation. And we are a training partner with uh, uh, Arrow ECS, uh, which means that we can offer one-stop shopping for implementation services, software acquisition, and uh, the critical skills training that you need in order to implement your IBM analytics solution. Um, one other thing that I'd like you to mention with this slide, can you also talk a little bit about um, your particular experience with DB2 for Z Linux? Oh, okay, so DB2 for Z Linux. Um, we are actually working right now with a customer that is migrating from an older IBM relational database on the VM and VSE platform, the old SQLDS, if any of you go back that far. Um, but we're, we're working right now with Z Linux, and the amazing thing to me is the price point at which IBM charges for it. IBM on System Z hardware uh, provides something called the Integrated Facility for Linux, the IFL. And uh, we're going to talk about IBM software pricing later on, but it, it is extraordinarily inexpensive, and uh, we were able to sell uh, the DB2 um, workgroup server edition uh, on the IFL running on System Z uh, for Linux, uh, DB2 for LUW, fully functional, um, for less than $10,000. Yes, so for whenever you hear um, customers complaining that the mainframe is so expensive, you could tell them, we have a customer that's running a fully functional DB2 on the mainframe, and they paid less than $10,000 for it. 
So I will introduce you. Um, I am Kim May, and I work for Frank Fillmore, who is the founder and president of the Fillmore Group. Uh, one of the things that we determined this past week while we were putting the presentation together is that Frank has actually performed over 35,000 billable hours supporting DB2 throughout his career. Um, and as a result, he is part of the DB2 Gold Consultant Program and also part of the IBM Champions Program, uh, basically because people in the DB2 community have recognized his contribution. So uh, he is a, a an IBM authorized instructor for many DB2 courses and has done an awful lot of presentations and is an excellent resource and I invite you to reach out to him after this presentation if you'd like more information because he also likes to talk to people. Thank you very much Kim. Uh, so two things that I would add to this slide. Number one, I've lost 30 pounds since that picture up in the upper right hand corner and Kim is also an IBM champion and the uh, newly minted uh, chairperson of the Baltimore Washington DB2 users group. So Kim's been supporting the community uh, for the last 11 years and has just uh, taken over that the leadership role, role within that users group. So commercials are over. <laughs> okay, so we'll go back to some of the history between, um, let's start with the history of DB2 versus Oracle. To my, in my um, memory, this really started around 2011. Um, there was a break free forum event at what was called at the time the Information on Demand Conference in Las Vegas. It's now become the world of Watson. It's IBM's annual data conference. And at that point, Steve Mills said, let's square off against Oracle and let's see if we can start winning back some, some customers. And um, these are some, these are, this is a slide with some pictures from some old events, but this has been going on for a long time and IBM has really worked very, very hard and invested heavily in developing tools that enable a simple migration because obviously, I mean, you can, we're competing on price here and there's going to be a lot of information on the pricing in this presentation and that's probably the core reason that most customers migrate. But the bottom line for any technical person is that you're going to have to work through a migration and the difficulty of that migration is going to determine, in many cases, whether or not you love where you end up. So we want you to end up loving DB2. So that's one of the reasons IBM's worked so hard to make it as simple as possible to do the migration. One other point is that at one of these four that Kim is talking about at uh, the Information on Demand conference, Arvind Krishna, who is now the Senior Vice President of IBM Analytics, uh, was asked uh, by an audience member um, how he viewed the uh, um, uh, the competition between IBM and Oracle, and his, his answer was, it's a knife fight. So Arvind Krishna is now head of IBM Analytics again after a sojourn uh, within the, uh, the, the systems uh, division. So I, I can expect that IBM is going to be very aggressive in this space. So this is, again, another older slide. A lot of this information isn't really new, but IBM has been putting together tools and different um, analytic tools so that you can demonstrate cost savings. And there's, there's the cost savings on the license side. Again, I want to bring up migration and services. Um, when you look at cost savings, you can look just at the license and you're looking at a very one-dimensional picture. But really what you need to look at is your total cost of ownership and in many cases DB2 administration is far simpler than Oracle. Therefore the costs, the overtime costs are lower, subscription and support is lower. And also we believe even if you factor in the migration costs, you're going to come up with a lower TCO. And obviously IBM agrees with that. <laughs> Yes. And, and one, one, one data point uh, regarding that, when we did an Oracle uh, to DB2 migration uh, for a large integrated financial services firm, um, the Oracle DBAs were amazed at how easy it was to back up and restore DB2 databases using the integrated backup facilities. They said when they used RMAN for Oracle, they said they, it used to take them a week to set it up. And now with DB2, it was a single command. So that is just one example of the ease of administration where uh, DB2 shines uh, in comparison to Oracle. Again, another older slide. I don't want to spend a lot of time with this, but I just want you guys to look at the highlighted items here. Highest availability, most scalable, fastest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are things that IBM has been working on for years. Those of us who are IBM business partners, like the Fillmore Group, have known for years. Um, we have, from a technical perspective, the best products on the market. Sometimes we don't have the most market share, but we definitely believe we have the best technology. And in the case of DB2 versus Oracle, I think we can pretty much hands down say that's the case. And in terms of commitment, IBM uh, in the past six months has hired 
500 new developers to work on core on-prem DB2 databases in order to build out uh, additional functionality, including HTAP, um, um, hybrid uh, transaction analytic processing platform, so that you can do an real-time analytics on your transaction processing data. Um, so IBM's commitment is continuing even through 2017. This is an example of a project that we actually contributed to a few years ago. Um, and we had a customer that was running Oracle that had a very famous outage. It was very well publicized. It was on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Um, they had a huge, uh, and you can see at the bottom here, 90,000 lines of Oracle PL, PLSQL stored procedure code now running on DB2. I won't say that this was done in five minutes. We actually had to do some iterative tuning over the course of, what, 18 months post-migration. Um, but basically, um, the, you can see the savings here. It was an enormous project, but it went off flawlessly. We did it with what was called at the time a zero downtime migration. Um, um, it wasn't really zero downtime. It actually took a while for the database to get caught up in the background. But, um, but from a customer-facing perspective, no customer knew they even were down. So it, was, it really went quite well. So we can do this for you, too. The other thing that I want to add here is um, that just in terms of perspective, um, this customer had multiple discrete Oracle databases for different aspects of their application. Um, the first... Um, uh, database um, basically did authentication of users as they were logging into the website and um, the, the the metric that I would use is it took two people three months for the first database migration this was a relatively simple database with about 28 tables but from bare iron on a new uh, new new platform new operating system new database software to production code running. We, it took from January until the end of March, which what we thought was pretty incredible for um, a, a database uh, and, and an application of this scale. And so we were able to follow on uh, periodically with other databases that were core to this application over the 18 months that Kim just mentioned. Okay, so we're going to go right to the three critical qualifiers. And one of the things that I want to stress here is the importance, in my opinion, of getting to know faster. If, if this isn't going to work for you, then I think you're, it's in your best interest not to pursue it. Um, and one of the things that's really tough for, that's a challenge for us, is if you're running Oracle proprietary application code, we can't migrate it. I mean, that's, it's owned by Oracle, it's not owned by IBM, none of us can really touch that. So if your organization relies on Oracle applications, you're probably not a good candidate for a DB2 migration. Um, and on the screen down at the bottom in that hideous yellow, and my apologies for the hideous yellow, is a tiny URL that takes you to a full list of all the Oracle applications. And you can go through this list, and I've had customers say to me, we're running Oracle Financials, but we really want to move away from Oracle. You can, but you're going to have, we're going to have to find an application that's going to run for you. And so it's going to be a little bit more challenging. This would be to me, if I'm a basic Oracle customer and I'm relying on Oracle applications, I might just say no right here. But the thing to remember is that um, many Oracle shops have not only Oracle applications that they're running, but they also have enterprise data warehouses and operational data stores and things like that. So it may be that you have multiple Oracle topologies, some of which would not qualify for a migration because they were Oracle proprietary applications, but others that, that have would. that would that have homegrown code. So it's not binary. It's not yes or no. If you have one Oracle application or one Oracle database, that does not disqualify all the other Oracle databases that you might have. And certainly if your organization wants to look at a multi-vendor scenario, in many cases that's extraordinarily healthy from um, a negotiation standpoint with your vendors. Okay, so the second, the second point here is that we need to, because IBM is offering significant discounts on DB2, um, in order for us to demonstrate the lower total cost of ownership, we really need to know what you're paying for Oracle. And I know in a lot of cases, customers sign agreements with Oracle that say that they, you know, this is confidential, we're not allowed to share this. You need to at least give us an accurate ballpark in order for us to do a comparison. And, and I think it just, it just makes sense. Okay, and the last one is, you know, where, where is your organization's opinion? What, what are you really thinking about DB2? 
um, be really concerned. If you're hearing from your colleagues, you know, we just aren't really sure about pursuing a migration or, or we keep starting this process but we never seem to move forward. You know, maybe you need to get an executive sponsor, maybe your DBA team needs some reassurance, you know, maybe you need a better migration estimate. Um, none of these are really the end of the world, but they can really slow things down. And unfortunately, we all know with technology, if you're slow in making a decision, the decision tends to never be made. So here we are, we are ready for the first poll. And, okay, so the questions are going to come up, and I apologize if this sounds a little strange, but I can't see the poll, only you can. So the questions are, do you run Oracle applications on all of your Oracle databases? Is your organization willing to share Oracle license cost information? Is your organization willing to consider a, deep, a migration to DB2? So the first question will come up first. We're going to do these one oh, okay. at a time. So okay. the, do you run Oracle applications on all of your Oracle databases? And we get to watch live. Oh, excellent. Most people say no. Yay. Okay, so right now it looks like the, the answers are, it's about 60-30 um, of no and not sure. We've got a couple people that said yes. So yes, people, um, you need to take a look at what you're running and how critical it is to your, to what your, to your business um, and whether or not there's any possibility that you could find a similar application or if your in-house people want to rewrite your application uh, or rewrite the functionality. All right, let's move on to the next question. So this second question is, is your organization willing to share Oracle license cost information? And I know this is something probably a lot of people just don't know. but um, if, you're, if your organization is, oh, wow, 100%, not sure. <laughs> I guess that shouldn't be a big surprise. But this is something, um, we will see this in a homework assignment, okay? This is something you need to find out. So let's go to question number three. Yeah, well, only half people have voted. You, you don't want to give them, give them another uh, minute or so? No, I already read them the question. Okay, you guys, if you haven't voted yet, vote now. <laughs> the clock is wow. ticking. We only, have, <laughs> we only have an hour. Okay. Third question, is your organization willing to consider a migration to DB2? And you can see the, the answers here. Yes, yeah. Oh my goodness, there are actually people responding that they are just there, they just needed a quiet place to have lunch. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't virtually share all my, uh, um, my chocolate Easter eggs, or I would. But well over 80% um, are saying that uh, either yes or not sure. Which okay, good. that's good. Yeah. That's excellent. And, and I wouldn't assume, I mean, I don't think this is a binary thing. Obviously, this is a process. It's a journey. So are we ready to move on? Yes. So thank you, everyone, for answering. Very good. So here we go. Here's our first homework assignment. Um, so, the, and the reason for this, and the reason for the home run, is that if you are someone who says, "Yes, we're not running, we're not running any Oracle applications. We are willing to share our financials, or at least an estimated cost of what we're paying Oracle right now," and it does sound like there's some interest and some and some momentum in moving toward DB2 then you've hit a home run, then I think you're getting close. And then we want to move into doing an assignment for you, which is number one, make sure you understand those three factors, and then really give some thought and assess your organization's readiness. And the most important thing I think that you can do to kind of really get things rolling is make a list of the people who need to be, who are going to be your sponsors and your decision makers and all those kind of folks, and, and get those people together. So make that list because that's the first step. Once you have that list together, you can start inviting people to um, meetings and things to start talking about what you can do. And Kim, I'd like to take a moment here to see if we have any questions that have come up. Um, anything in the chat? It does not look like it. Um, no? Okay, we'll keep rolling. That sounds good. Okay. Okay, so keep going. 
And now we're going to talk a little bit about licenses and versioning. So one of the things I think when you look at, at when you try to do some comparisons, and I put these slides together over the last couple of weeks and, and spent a lot of time taking a look at the, the way that the product uh, packaging is, is done today and the different options that you have for purchasing. And the bottom line is that things, you know, this is the more things change, the more they stay the same. Both Oracle and DB2 offer express editions and offer personal editions. These are typically used for test and dev environments for developers that are going to start messing around and seeing what they can do with something. So I don't want to focus on either of those. I think, you know, they're either, they're between free and $2,000. They're basically inexpensive, low-end low -end packaging options. The stuff that we're talking about that we want to talk about in this presentation is, is organization production strength database technology. So we're going to talk about the Oracle Enterprise Edition and the DB2 Advanced Enterprise Server Edition, AESE. Um, that's one, those are really two somewhat similar packaging options and then also Oracle Standard versus the DB2 Advanced Workgroup Edition. These are the smaller department sized, um, um, there's some size limitation. Um, offerings. So one of the things that I think is in, in terms of IBM's um, trying to compete against Oracle and, and doing some sort of amazing things, I think, when, when you look at their way of competing, the DB2 advanced versions, both the work group, the smaller departmental version, and the advanced server uh, version, um, the enterprise advanced server uh, version, include a bunch of tools and a bunch of features and functionality that you pay separately for with Oracle. And some of these you could say, well, you know, yeah, everybody puts some tools in, that's really cool. Some of these tools are not just kind of like little tools, they're like really rather impressive things. Um, um, PureScale is a, um, is a high availability solution that's based on the mainframe parallel SysPlex technology. Um, it's, it's something that I don't think Oracle comes even close to. Um, Blue Acceleration, as Frank alluded to before, HTAP, which is the hybrid transaction analytic processing option, allows you to run both OLTP and analytic workloads on the same database. This is what Blue Acceleration is all about. It's something that's, it's, it's new technology um, and it's included. Um, you're not going to pay for this as a separate, as a separate option. So this is the whole list. This is, um, this is probably the most important when you're looking at this from a pricing perspective when you're doing an Oracle versus DB2 comparison, understanding that you're not going to pay extra for any of these features, any of these functions is really important to know. Um, one note with this though, I will say one correction on this is HADR is included. The capability for HADR is included, but you will pay, you do have to pay 100 PVUs, which is a minimal amount, um, to license your standby server. And there is a complete matrix in the um, in the link at the bottom. So if you'd like to see which fe which feature is available in which packaging option, uh, you can do that as well. Um, and one other note with this too: um, when you're looking at migration options, when you're looking at doing a migration, you know. I want to do the fruit thing, um, apples to apples, you probably don't run a lot of these tools. You probably don't use these and probably you may not even have use for any of these. However, these are things that once your developers know you have access to them, suddenly become built into every application and suddenly become critical functions. So if you're paying for similar stuff from Oracle, this is stuff, those costs will just go away. So this is a list of the Oracle database options and um, I think it's important that, that people understand, you know, I think the third item here, you cannot purchase any options with Oracle Standard Edition. Um, this is, with, with IBM, you can run Advanced Workgroup Edition and get all that stuff on that prior slide. So the link down at the bottom, again, has, is taking you to the Oracle options and understand you pay extra for each one of these. I have pages and pages of notes. Um, so also because you're paying separately for those Oracle functions, there are a whole bunch of different packs that you can buy. And this is just a way of saying, okay, we're going to throw some stuff together and, and sell it to you. Um, and, but understand if you were to do something like this and you go through each of these management packs or whatever packs um, with DB2, you would, the price tag for all of them would be about the same and it would be zero. Because they would be included in, in the base advanced edition. Exactly. Exactly. So, 
Um, two things I wanted to note on here um, before I get started. I am not going to talk about subcapacity or virtualized virtualization or cloud deployments for either of these models because um, I think with cloud deployments right now I, I think everyone understands uh, both Oracle and DB2 would love for you to be running your database in the cloud um, they will do everything they can to make that happen there are hybrid options there are all kinds of different options being you know there's a new option available every single week and the reality is um, the pricing doesn't change significantly um, if you offer to go into the cloud, you'll probably get a discount to get to move some workload into the cloud, but it's not going to make a huge difference in terms of proportion. Um, the second thing in terms of subcapacity and virtualization, IBM is subcapacity virtualization friendly and Oracle is not. Typically with an Oracle um, server, you are required to license all the cores on that server. Uh, whereas IBM will allow you, if you can demonstrate that you're using um, VMware or something like that, you can actually do subcapacity licensing and only license the uh, cores that you're actually using to support the, the software. So the two different ways, um, Oracle pricing is based on core factors. So Oracle goes down to, both companies do the same thing. They have a list of different server technologies, different, uh, different processors. And um, you go down to this table with all the different processors listed and you find the one that's in your server and it gives you, in Oracle's case, a core factor. In IBM case, a PVU, a processor value unit factor. Uh, the processor value units are in, have a quantity assigned to them. The core factor table has a quantity assigned to them. So you go and you take a look at what your server processor is and if you're um, trying to really get a good deal before you buy the server, you take a look at this table and you figure out what your best deal is. And, um, and then you buy your software based on the number of processors in your server and what the capacity is of the server. Very good, thank you. Both Oracle and IBM offer some form of unlimited license agreements. Um, anyone who's ever had an unlimited license agreement understands that there is nothing unlimited about it at all. Um, both of them are really based on estimates of utilization um, and both of them have um, require a fair amount of negotiation. Um, one of the things that IBM tried to do a few years ago, and I think they've been pretty successful in terms of moving customers away from Oracle ULAs, is that they took a look at some of the typical uh, ULA features and said, we can beat it. So one of the things that they did, a ULA requires for Oracle, you've got to have a three-year minimum. Um, you could do an IBM for just one year. Um, you can do, um, one of the challenges with Oracle ULAs is that you've got, you, you have some price uncertainty because um, your support costs can change. And so IBM has tried to address that. Um, IBM has a, the IULA is out there, it's an option. Basically what I'm going to talk about in just a moment is um, processor value unit versus core factor uh, pricing. And we all know with the ULA or the IULA, you've got a little bit of the Wild West there. Um, you can ask for whatever you want. The question is whether or not you can get it. So here we go. Um, we're trying to do apples to apples and what we really have, and, and some of this is marketing from both organizations. Um, there is, there, we're selling relational database technology that runs on servers, however, um, there's lots of tools, there's lots of functionalities, there's lots of things that are similar and lots of things that are different. Basically, the most important thing you can do is to figure out, um, document exactly what you have, drill down as best you can, and if you have any questions about what you have, how that would translate to the DB2 world, get in touch with us or get in touch with an IBM seller and talk to them about how this translates because the closer you can get to saying, I have X, Y, and Z today, and what what does it take for me to have X, Y, and Z tomorrow? That's the best way for us to do a really good license analysis. And the bullet points that you have down here are, can, can you take advantage of um, aggressive IBM special pricing? Can you extend the database functionality without having to pay more for it? And would subcapacity licensing significantly reduce your costs? We've we had uh, a customer in the financial services industry, a, a different one, who um, just needed to move some, um, some, a few tables, uh, a few DB2 tables onto a server that was also uh, running Oracle, and they were amazed that they were able to save 
uh, a significant amount because they were able to use an LPAR or a VMware um, that, that restricted the number of processors that were available to the DB2 database, and this was something that was new to them. Absolutely. Okay, so we're ready for the next poll question. And this is poll question number four because the other poll was three and one. One, two, three. Oh, aren't you clever? Okay, okay. I was like, wow, how did we get that far? Okay, so my questions here are... Okay, how do we do this? I don't know how this is structured. These are multiple yeah. choice, so okay. you can pick uh, any or all of these. Okay, okay. So those are the questions. I, oh, I know so what we're these, paying. Okay, I know what we're paying annually for Oracle licenses. That's yes or no, right? Yes. Okay, okay, I'm confused. Okay, I have access to a calculator. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? I can multiply the Oracle annual cost due in 2017 by 20%. So this is a big math challenge for those of you that finished the fifth grade. Uh oh, only 30% can do this. <laughs> but almost everybody has access to a calculator. <laughs> those of you without access to a calculator, get your phone out. <laughs> <laughs> There's an app for that. But notice the biggest challenge. Um, I, I okay. know what we're paying annually for. Yeah, lots of people don't know what they're paying annually for Oracle. Okay, but if you can do this, for those of you who are able to accomplish this, so what do we have? Oh, 30%. I can multiply at the bottom. Okay, what, what is it? But they can't multiply if they don't know if what they're paying. If they don't paying. know the number. Yeah. Okay, but for the 15% that know what, the, what they're paying annually for Oracle and have a calculator and can multiply that cost by 20%. Okay, next slide. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Frank asked me um, what 1960s presentation I got this slide out of. <laughs> and it's kind of embarrassing. But so basically, the 20% uh, uh, the is what IBM is. That is the target for anyone who is an Oracle customer moving to DB2. That is as low as you can go. According to the IBM teams right now, that's what they are shooting for on 20, with their 2017 Oracle attack play. And that's what we are hoping every customer on this webinar is able to achieve sometime this year. So this is your next homework assignment. See if you can find out what you're paying for your Oracle subscription, your Oracle support right now. Multiply that number by 0.2. That is your potential DB2 license cost if you move to DB2. So now we get into the serious stuff. Do you want to talk a little bit about migration since you've been through this? Sure, I've been, been through it many times as well as you have. Unfortunately, um, the way that this has played out in the past oh so many times is that um, IBMers or business partners will go to customers, they will offer very aggressive pricing to save on license costs, and um, the customer will be ready to sign on the bottom line, and then someone will bring up the, the, the dreaded migration word and say, well, how do we get there from here? And after all of the, the, the cost justification has been done, somebody has to do an estimate to say, what will it take to do a migration? And then all of a sudden, people's heads start to spin because they say, oh my God, what is this going to take? So fortunately, we have been through multiple migrations of this sort. Uh, we know where the, the, the pitfalls are and where the, the, the speed bumps are. And we can give you a pretty accurate appraisal based on a number of different metrics as to what um, it will take to do a migration. Um, now, when we say one of the things that is, is um, emphasized by IBM is the 95% compatibility with Oracle PLSQL right out of the box, meaning that most of your application should run unmodified. So what do we need to do in terms of migration if, if my applications already work? Well, you don't have to change your applications. However, um, a, just because an SQL statement is uh, syntactically uh, correct in DB2 and will run, it doesn't mean it's going to necessarily run as fast as it used to run in Oracle. So you may spend some time uh, performance tuning using um, tools that are available within DB2, such as the design advisor, such as materialized query tables or multi-dimensional uh, clustering. If you're familiar with DB2 at all, these are all ways to make the data come back faster. 
you obviously have to get the data out of Oracle into DB2. There are tools that help you do that. There are uh, facilities, there's a tool called the Database Conversion Workbench that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and then finally, um, there are aspects that you need to consider uh, for the migration that we'll, we'll drill down into, like um, ETL downstream processes. After my transaction processing occurs, I need to get this data out of my transaction processing database into a reporting database. So how do we do that? We used to do it with Oracle tools. Now we need to do it with DB2 tools. And then backup recovery, high availability. So um, in terms of migration resources, there are a lot of resources on the IBM Developer Works website. Uh, lots of people have been through this before, and there are a lot of things that you can avail yourself of. Business partners like the Fillmore Group. And if you are um, using SAP now, because the SAP application has been natively written both for DB2 and for Oracle, that is a pretty straightforward migration, and IBM Lab Services actually has what they call a t-shirt sized um, migration package based on the size of your database uh, and the number of databases you, that you have, what it will take to move from SAP. So this is something that IBM has a, a well-defined procedure for and could stamp out pretty quickly if you're using SAP. However, if you're not using SAP, I think one of the things that we want to explain here, and, and it, you, we can only explain this a million times, and, and it still is that important, is that you have to factor in the cost and the effort of the migration when you're looking at actually doing the migration. If you're looking at your license cost and you're saying, oh my gosh, we can save so much money on the licenses, do understand this migration is going to cost you money and it's also going to take an awful lot of time and you're also probably going to have some developers and some DBAs that are very unhappy. So what we want to try to do is make it as painless as possible, but we want to make sure the best way to make it as painless as possible is to estimate accurately. So these are the t-shirt sizes. So we did pick because we are in Baltimore, we did pick Baltimore Orioles t-shirts to show you the t-shirt sizes. It's actually small, medium, large, and extra large. Woohoo! So again, migration considerations. I can't emphasize how important these are. Um, you will hear from people over and over again, hey, it's a database. How did your DBAs get trained? Your DBAs know how to do database administration. They can learn DB2. It's really similar. Um, the stuff that's gonna that's gonna come back to haunt you is going to be the stuff that you overlook when you're looking at when you're planning your migration. And so, a well scoped migration is a is a migration that has the highest probability of success. And all we can say is every single option should be considered. There's actually there are a lot of some there are some checklists on developer works. Um, I would definitely recommend even if you have someone scope your migration that you have someone a second person take a look at it. I think this is something it's it is really that important. The Fillmore Group actually has a white paper that we put together from an earlier um, Oracle to DB2 migration um, that, that talks about lessons learned. And we'll have that posted on the blog uh, with this presentation as well, so you can download that and look at it. But in terms of DB2 skills, there are actually courses that are um, um, DB2 uh, database administration for Oracle DBAs. So it does the, this is how you did it in Oracle, this is how you do it in DB2, so we can do skills assessment. Um, Kim mentions the Oracle database document the landscape, so you need to understand your test dev, your QA, and production environments. Um, the application documentation would be great uh, in terms of how well you understand your application. Some of these might have been developed over a long period of time. Um, the DBA tools. So there are some tools that work both with DB2 and Oracle, and there are others that are not. So your your um, um, database administrators uh, may need to learn some tools like IBM Optum tools or uh, Data Studio tools um, that they have not used before, and you need to be aware of that. It's not only the SQL compliance. There are differences in utilities and differences in commands and things like that that you need to be aware of. I mentioned the ETL and the replication to other database repositories downstream. So you may have a script that you run that extracts data every day from a database and then loads a reporting database. Or you may have a replication process that occurs real time uh, using Oracle um, Golden Gate uh, that copies data out of the Oracle database and pumps it into the, the downstream operational data store. So these are all things that you're going to need to consider that might or might not need to change, but they need to be uh, part of the holistic view of what needs to take place in order to have an effective migration. 
and also understanding, like, you know, talking to someone who's been through this process before because, as Frank said, some of these may not need to change. So there may be, for instance, you may be using Golden Gate to do your replication and you may say, we're going to not, we're going to leave Golden Gate there for the first six months, we'll move that later um, because your, your, your target stuff will still be working. So you just want to be really careful. So this is my warning sign. If you fail to if fail to plan, you plan to fail. All right, so the other thing Frank mentioned, education. There are some classes that have been developed specifically for Oracle DBAs to help them learn DB2. But one of the things that we have seen and one of the things that, that I think is extremely important, especially just in terms of getting the mind share from the DBAs, is to get DBAs involved in the DB2 community. Um, there are regional users groups, there are conferences, um, there are lots of people, um, there's a, there, the International DB2 Users Group has a listserv called DB2L. There are people on DB2L 24 hours a day um, answering the most arcane questions and one of the first questions they'll ask when somebody asks something that's kind of stupid, um, they'll be like, oh, are you new to DB2? And then there'll be like 30 people that jump in and say, I would read this first or I would take this class. So lots and lots of people who um, love to share what they know. And I'm going to take a I'm going to take a checkpoint right here and see if we have any um, chat questions. And by the way, if there's anyone on here right now who is um, a frequent contributor to DB2L, um, I know that people really do find it valuable. So I don't mean to be so snarky. Not so far. I, we're okay. either doing a very good job. They they We know people are out there because they've responded to the polls. Or they're asleep. Or eating their lunch. <laughs> or eating their lunch. There you go. Okay, so again, more about the migration process and how important it is. But um, the tool that IBM has developed or the set of tools that they've developed to help customers with the migration is called the Database Conversion Workbench, the DCW. That doesn't really roll off the tongue quickly. Um, but um, the Database Conversion Workbench ha is a proven process and it, there really are, there's data movement tools in there, there's tools. That, that the one thing that's not in there is, is really the after the migration uh, tuning, which is really going to be um, something, this is why people test. Anyone who's here, I hope, understands the value of testing. But you can test in advance, and then you test right after, and then if there's something that isn't working particularly well, you have to be prepared. You have to look as part of your migration strategy. It is post, there is a, a, a place for post-migration tuning. It's going to be there. Before we leave this slide, I also want to uh, point out, consider support renewal dates. That um, yeah, go ahead, Kim. Okay, so a lot of Oracle customers um, have a May 31st renewal date, and we certainly, we understand that it's the first week in April, and it may be too late for you to actually consider moving to DB2 before the end of May, unless you're like really, really fast. Um, if you want to give it a try, um, we're with you. We, we will certainly help you. But um, um, one of the things I want people to, to consider when they're looking at the financial justification is that you probably will need to run parallels for a while and you probably will need to be licensed for both for a while and that's something that's also going to need to be factored in because if you can figure this out so that you actually you know um, uh, begin paying for DB2 for a short period of time um, at the same time that you're paying for Oracle that's great so um, this is just something you get out a calendar and see if you can make it work, but uh, that's something we can help with too. Right, but you, you know, from the practical standpoint, you don't want to sign up for another three-year uh, UILA if you're considering moving to DB2 too. So you know, Absolutely. You, want to, you want to shorten your exposure if you can. Yes. Okay, so these are some of the things that are included with the database conversion workbench. These are some of the features in it. Um, this is a free download. It's available um, to anyone. So if you want to take a look at this and take a look through, um, this also includes for, for people that aren't familiar, uh, Dash DB, DB2 on cloud, um, because as I said before, processes is similar. The other thing to note is if you're familiar with this, this used to be called the IDMT, the IBM Data Movement Tool. So this has been through multiple different iterations and is actually very battle tested. I used it a lot. Um, my goodness, 
five or six years ago and uh, very sophisticated in terms of being able to um, um, make the nuances between Oracle and NDB2 uh, sort of flesh out more easily. Uh, I'll give you some examples. The way that Oracle handles dates and represents dates is different than the way that DB2 does. And so flattening out those types of um, um, those types of anomalies, uh, trailing blanks and those types of things in data fields and how they are handled differently. The fact that um, DB2 can support a zero length field, variable character field, um, that is uh, not null, uh, which Oracle cannot do. Those are all the types of things that you need to be aware of, um, and the, the little nitty-gritty things that, that can make your life more difficult. And, and these are all things that are addressed by the database conversion workbench process. Yeah, and this is probably not something you're going to dive into right away. I think one, one of, the, um, one of the, the war stories that Frank and I talk about is, is a few years ago we were, we were working with an IBM team with a customer um, that was considering moving um, to DB2. And we got on a conference call with the customer and we started talking to them about their environment. And they said, yes, well, you know, we have an Oracle database for each of our customers. And we said, okay, well, we thought this was one database we were migrating. And they said, well, actually, we make a clone of this database whenever we get a new customer. And then we customize it for that customer. And we were like, okay, are the customizations pretty consistent? And they said, no, not really. They're based on whatever deal we negotiate with the customer. And we said, okay, well, how many customers do you have? And they said, 150. And we said, oh, oh, that migration effort became an enormous challenge. Um, so there's a lot of things you have to, you have to look at the big picture and then you're going to start drilling down, drilling down. But uh, these are some fabulous tools. When you get to the point where you're drilling down, you're going to need to use these tools. Um, I did want to put a slide in about the client value engagement. Um, this is a, an, a process option that is available from IBM and also from IBM Business Partners. It's basically a very well documented, very well thought out process that allows you to um, do some, and, and it's it's like any, any sort of analysis type of project. You start by doing some um, question and answer with some stakeholders and you document what their responses are and you take a look at what the key factors are and what people are looking at in terms of what's important to them. Um, and then um, IBM, because they have done a tremendous amount of work with financial analysis in terms of pricing um, and also some of the migration um, estimates, this actually allows you to bundle everything into a beautiful report, which you can then bring back to your management team and say, this is, this, these are all the different factors that would justify the movement. Um, it doesn't take five minutes. It's actually a little bit of, there's a bit of time and effort involved in this, but it's available. And so if you are from an organization where management wants to see, wants to ask 37,000 questions and perhaps has a committee, um, this is something that you can wow them with. And if you're willing to invest the time, we are too. Okay, poll question number five. So, where does your team need the most help with the migration effort? And again, this is you can pick more than one. Yes, yes. So I think also in terms of this, um, um, documenting the initial license costs, three-year savings, and TCO is probably, you might be a good candidate for a CVE. Um, we could probably also do this um, back of an envelope if you needed us to. They, the Oracle attack play is making this actually pretty simple. Uh, scoping the migration effort and documenting current environment are, are things that are probably more on you. My, my fave is that 50% of the people saying that I'm flooding <laughs> is everything an option. We've that's, overwhelmed them. That's my answer always. <laughs> no, no. You're getting some good feedback here. This is, this is good. Okay, yeah. Lots of people say, you know, everything is an option. So, yeah, is everything an option? Yes, yes. This gets very complicated very quickly. Oh, but this is interesting. So, fifty percent of the people, fifty percent of the people that responded said documenting our current environment is a challenge, um, and fifty percent said getting our developers and DBAs trained. So, I'm glad there's some recognition there. Um, the 
one of one of the um, the sweetest things that's happened to us is we worked with an Oracle to DB2 migration customer that um, um, had some people in house that knew DB2. And when you've got some DB2 um, skills in house, suddenly that that really helps. But it's not it's not a reality for everybody. So in a lot of cases, you do need to train. So we'll go to our next steps. So basically what I need everyone to do, if you're interested in moving forward, you know, take a look. I know that the questions, the assignments are really quite simple. But if you go through those and you say, okay, it looks like we're in the right place to do this, um, then the next step is, you know, let's talk this through a little bit more and let's talk about what your concerns are and what your objectives are. And um, how, then we can begin putting a plan together and figure out what we can do to help. Uh, one of the things that there's a, an assignment here for anyone here who's interested to schedule a call with Frank. Frank's assignment is to talk to you and to basically share with you some of his experiences. And I think the more open and candid we can be, the more likely we are to come up with something that with a, a realistic plan. And I want to make sure we use the realistic word because when you talk to um, when you look at just the license costs, you're going to be just wowed. The license costs are, are phenomenal. Your savings are wonderful. But we want to make sure we get you there. And I think that's the last homework assignment. So here are some resources we've put together. These will be in with a slide deck that we'll post on the blog. Um, and um, I think the next slide after this has your contact information. It's your cell phone number. Um, yes, but I don't want to skip over this too quickly, though, because oh, okay. this, is, this is really good stuff. So the Knowledge Center Oracle feature is supported by DB2 for LUW version 11.1. .1. So this will go down chapter and verses to the things that are supported. And IBM has done a very good job, not only with um, um, the, the syntax, but commit control and things like that. The database conversion workbench, as Kim said, this is a free tool for download. And then finally, the Oracle to DB2 migration guide, uh, a PDF. Uh, that you can download and use all free resources that you can uh, get access to today. Okay, and um, I think that's pretty much it. Do you want to look and see if you have any questions? I will. Um, I know we went through that very quickly, and I think, you know, the the message here is the pricing is fabulous, the migration is, is an obstacle, but um, there are lots of resources to help you with the migration, and I hope we have the opportunity to do that. Um, I tell you what, uh, if there are no qu I'll, I'll wait for another minute or so if there's anything that we did not cover. As Kim said, this presentation will be up on our blog within the next day along with the slides, uh, a recording of this presentation or a link to the recording, the presentation and the white paper. So we'll have all that available for you uh, within the next 24 hours. Okay, and I will post contact information. I will send contact information for Frank to everyone that's um, attended this call because I do invite you to reach out to Frank, um, IBMers and uh, customers. Um, one of the things that's that's been um, um, terrific for us is we we have had the pleasure of working with an awful lot of IBMers to help their customers because as as most of you on this call know who work with your IBM sellers um, your IBM sellers cover an awful lot of products these days and so um, if there's something that you specialize in one of the things that they are tasked with the sellers are tasked with is to bring in resources to help you and with that we'll close out everyone have a good rest of your morning uh, or afternoon or evening. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you.